This video will serve as an introduction to electromagnetism, and as the word suggests, this field of physics has to do with electricity and magnetism. Given how important these concepts are for our everyday life, it is worth taking a look at this field. As it turns out, electromagnetism was the second fundamental interaction to be discovered, and the first one to be fundamentally understood. We will see later how electromagnetism is closely connected to the theory of special relativity, and we will also later discuss it when we get to quantum field theory. But in this video, we will take a look at the basics, and why it's important for our everyday life. Let's first do a history recap. Electricity and magnetism became a rigorous field of study around the 17th century, although magnetic compasses has been used at least since the 12th century. It took until the early 19th century for Danish physicist Hans Christian Oerster to show a relationship between electricity and magnetism by putting a compass near a current carrying wire. In the following years, this field was heavily studied and electromagnetism helped Einstein to develop his theory of special relativity. Finally, in the 20th century, the quantum theory of electromagnetism called quantum electrodynamics QED was developed and it became incorporated into the standard model. Magnetism is probably the simplest thing to discuss. Most people have used a compass, so let's take a look at how it works. A magnet has a north and a south pole, and it creates a magnetic field where the field lines go from north to south. If you put two south or two north poles together, they will repel each other, but if you put a north and a south pole together, they will attract each other. You can understand it like this. The field lines must go from north to south. This is achieved by putting a north and a south pole together. But if you, for instance, put two north poles together, the lines don't want to connect, so they push each other away. Now back to the compass. Because the Earth has a magnetic iron core, it produces a magnetic field around the Earth. And the magnetic field in the Earth has its south pole near the north pole of the Earth. Thus, if you use a compass, it will point to the north as it's where the magnetic south pole of the Earth is. The Earth's magnetic field is not only important for navigation, but it also shields Earth against solar winds and other types of charged particles from space, which hit Earth all the time, so it also protects us. Now let us consider an electric field. This field is different in one fundamental way. Here you have either positive or negatively charged particles. Notice that a magnet has poles, and if you cut over the magnet, you will just have two smaller magnets, each with two poles. You cannot have an object which only has a north or south pole. You must have both a north and a south pole. This is a fundamental difference, as individual charged particles can either be negative or positive. You can also have a bigger object, like a battery, with a negative and a positive end, but individual particles are either plus or minus negative or positive. An electric field is created by one or more charged particles. If we consider a single positively charged particle, it would just create a uniform magnetic field, and by definition the field lines go radially outwards for a positive charge. If the charge was negative, the field lines would go inwards. The electric field from a positively charged particle can be described as E equals to KQ divided by r squared, where e is the electric field, k is a constant, q is the charge of the particle, as an example it could be just one, and r is the radius of the electric field. We see from this that the strength of the electric field falls with the factor of 1 over r squared, but notice that technically the range is infinite, as e will never be exactly zero. At long ranges the effect just becomes insignificant. This is an important property of electromagnetism, that the range is infinite but it just becomes insignificant over long distances. Let's now consider the case of two particles with different charges. They will form a field where the lines go from positive to negative. We can describe the force between these particles as F equal to K Q1 times Q2 over R squared, where F is the force, K is again a constant, R is the distance between the two charged particles, Q1 is the charge of the first particle, and Q2 is the charge of the second particle. Now if you have watched the video on gravity, or just remember the law of gravity, then you realize that this equation is exactly the same form as the universal law of gravity. This is quite interesting. If 
by now we have discussed the electric and magnetic fields individually. But as mentioned in the beginning, they are very much related. It took a long time, but eventually scientists managed to come up with the Lorentz force, or in other words, the electromagnetic force, which is written as F is equal to Q and in parentheses E plus V cross B, where again F is the force, Q is the charge, E is the electric field, V is the velocity, and B is the magnetic field. With this equation, there was finally a direct link between electricity and magnetism. This becomes even more clear if we set the force to zero, F equal to zero, and we obtain minus E is equal to V cross B. If you wonder what this cross means, then it just means the cross product. As we mentioned in the video about units, some quantities are vectors. In this case, E, V and B are all vectors. Vectors don't multiply in the same way like numbers, but what you can do is take the cross product, and the cross represents the cross product between the two vectors, V and B. You might be wondering how to understand the field lines between magnets and charged particles. What is the mechanism behind this interaction? The answer lies with the photon, or more precisely, virtual photons. For now, all you need to know about virtual photons is that they don't really exist in the traditional way, since they cannot be measured, but these virtual photons are responsible for mediating the electromagnetic force. It turns out that the photons are actually composed of both a magnetic and an electric field, because inside the photon it carries information about each type of field. In this way, the photon is the ultimate symbol of the unification of the magnetic and the electric fields as one unified electromagnetic field. At this point you might ask why all this we just talked about is useful. Well, in short, this is the foundation of electronic devices and much more. Generators and electric motors are based on the Lorentz force, which as we discussed earlier, unites magnetism and electricity into one equation. Light, which you see, and the Wi-Fi you might be using is electromagnetic waves. The music you listen to comes from speakers, which also work using the interplay between the magnetic and electric fields. The modern civilization would be nothing without the basic understanding of electromagnetism, which is presented in this video. So I hope you learned something interesting, and as always, like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more.